Hey everybody, it's Commander Restless Corpse. We're back here with Elite Dangerous. And we are still way the hell above the galactic plane. We are in the giant neutron star patch. Uh, I've been here for several hours. I have scanned so many neutron stars that I have actually lost count. Not that I was counting anyway, but it's just, it's a ridiculous amount. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that I will never actually get all of these. But because we're in this patch here, there, uh, there really isn't going to be a whole lot going on. I do have to confess, though, that I did find an Earth-like uh, orbiting a neutron star that I didn't get on camera. So I think that we're number is up to 11 now. And uh, I, I, I guess I'm happy to say that despite the two systems that that were already scanned by someone in yesterday's episode and one other one that i found that also had an earth like in it uh that i ended up not scanning because it was like 220 thousand or something light seconds away uh that was already scanned by someone but with the exception of those three systems uh everything has been undiscovered everything i found black holes neutron stars i mean look at this these are all neutron stars and black holes guys and what i've been doing is just just plotting you know a course at a time as you can see a lot of these uh, some of these are already scanned I, i've moved into a new section of the patch so there's going to be more that are unscanned but if you look at all these man uh quite a few of them but what i've been doing is i've been just going to whatever's closest plotting that one and going you know um but because there really isn't anything new going on uh i've decided to tell you guys a story now this is a story from back around 2001 close to maybe 2002 i would go more 2002 uh and this is the story of how harry potter almost killed me Yes, you heard that right. Harry Potter almost killed me, and it's a. It, I've told this story before, and everybody's like, "Ah, Harry Potter didn't didn't almost kill you." But seriously, Harry Potter almost killed me. Let's uh, let, let's talk about this for a second. So, back when I lived in Ohio, back around 2001, 2002, uh, and early 2003, I, I lived there for about a year. So it had to have been 2002 to 2003. So I moved here to Milwaukee in in August of 03. Uh, but back then, I lived in a little town called Piqua, Ohio, and I managed a movie theater there. A movie theater was in a mall. I think I've talked about this before. Uh, I don't remember if I talked about it on this series, but I, I managed a movie theater that was in the mall that was right next to an arcade. And uh, now that I think about it, I've not talked about this, so we'll, we'll talk about the arcade part later at some point. But it was... You know, it was just one of those theaters that was in a mall. It had like, uh, I don't know, 12 theaters in it or something. And we still use the old school, um, like, boards. You know how, like, when you drive by a theater, it has, like, a sign that tells you, you know, what's playing and stuff like and times and stuff like that? Uh, we still used one. That, like, this was back before they were all digital. So we had to actually go out there and change the signs like you know you have the little plastic letters that you put up on the white signs so it was it was very cold it was like the dead of winter it was snowing it was blizzard like there there just weren't a whole lot of people coming out that night so i ended up sending most of like well pretty much everybody home because we uh we had already started the last movie of the night and generally when that happens you'll keep somebody around to like clean up and stuff but since there weren't a whole lot of people there i don't even think anybody actually came to see the last movie of the night so i sent everybody home because you know that's what managers have to do sometimes to cut down on you know uh, they call them cut down on hours i guess so that you know you're not losing money because you're not gaining any money so paying employees uh it it's kind of counterproductive when you're not making any money. So I sent everybody home, and I was just going to finish up everything by myself. But I forgot that the sign needed to be done. So I was like, ah, shit. So I had to go out to the street of this mall, like, through the entire parking lot uh, and out into this 
to the street in this blizzard in my suit. I didn't have a jacket. And, uh, well, I mean, I had the suit jacket, but it, it really wasn't that cold earlier when I went to work, so I didn't think I would need anything, so I had this jacket. So I climbed up onto this, uh, this sign. You know, I popped the ladder up there. It was snowing like crazy. I climbed up onto the sign with this big bag of letters and stuff, and and I was changing all the movie times and, and like, putting up the the new movies that were coming out the, the next day and stuff like that. Well, uh, across the way, across the parking lot from where I was making the sign, there was a Chinese food place. Now, I absolutely love Chinese food. And, you know, I was looking at it, and I was hungry. You know, I usually, uh, when I get home, I make myself something to eat. But tonight... I wanted Chinese food. So I was already kind of getting sick. Like, because at this time I didn't have a car. Uh, so I, you know, and I only lived like, I don't know, four or five blocks away from, from work. So I would walk to work and, you know, walking to work in the cold and the snow and whatnot. You, sometimes you get, you get a cold, you know, uh, but so I'm already kind of getting sick and I'm up here in this blizzard with no, no real jacket changing these letters. I see, you know, there's Chinese food. I'm going to get Chinese food and, uh, you know, heat it up when I get home. So I, I, I finish up the sign. I go back inside. I do all the closing stuff, like take the inventory and count all the money and whatever and get all done and close the place up and go on over to, the Chinese food place and get some like shrimp fried rice and some crab rangoon, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know, just going crazy with the Chinese food. And I walk it home. And when I walk home, um, you know, I got to heat up the food because it's cold. I, I just walked four or five blocks or something in the cold with this Chinese food. It got cold. So I threw it in the microwave and I went over and uh, I was living with some roommates at the time and we had HBO and stuff or whatever. So I'm looking for something to find or like looking to find something to watch while I'm waiting for my food. And I see that Harry Potter is coming on and I'm like, well, you know, I've never seen Harry Potter. People say it's good. I'll watch it. Why not? So, you know, my food's done heating up and the movie's starting. And so I start watching Harry Potter. I've never seen it. And, you know, I'm eating by my shrimp and my fried rice and just all the stuff that I've I've gotten. But here's the deal, like the movie bored me to sleep. And listen, if you like the Harry Potter series, that's totally cool. And at some point, maybe I'll give it another try. This was many, many years ago. Maybe I'll give it another try at some point and, and like because I I hear that the books are like actually really super good. And maybe the, I guess people really like the movies too. So maybe the movies are really super good. I just, I don't know. It bored me to sleep. I passed out. Well, about an hour later, and I think at this point the movie was, was over and it was on to something else because it was HBO, you know, they just keep going. It wasn't on demand or anything like that. I, 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 I like wake up startled and I can't breathe and I'm, I'm like choking I can't breathe like I, my my throat is in pain it's all constricted and closed up and my uvula the little dangly thing in the back is swollen so big that it's actually just sitting on my tongue gagging and choking me and it was the scariest thing that I've ever experienced in my life I thought I was gonna die so I, I didn't know what to do I was freaking out um, my roommates end up like getting home it was uh, the, and this is weird, but it was an ex-girlfriend and her husband that I was living with at the time. So they get home, and I'm like, they could see that I'm visibly, like, distressed. And I'm I, I'm talking, but, like, it's kind of hard to understand me because all my throat is constricted and everything. And, and, um, and I'm like, guys, look, I got to go to the hospital. Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm choking. I can barely breathe. And I don't know what they were out doing until this late at night but they're like we're really we're really tired so just take the keys and drive yourself to the hospital and i'm like what the fuck like i i might die like i can't what i don't even know where the damn hospital is because you know i don't have a car so i don't know the area there's no reason for me to know the area 
but they're you know like we we can't you know i think they might have been drunk or something um because to be honest my, my ex-girlfriend was a stripper and she i guess would party after work or whatever it's it's unimportant long story short i had to find my own way to the hospital like obviously they they let me drive the car but so i'm you know i'm panicking i'm driving they i i get like some really bullshit directions from them to get to what did, what did i just do oh no I get some really like bullshit directions from them to get to this hospital, and I'm terrible with directions. I'm a guy, but I, I eventually make it to this hospital, and like at this point, I literally like I'm struggling for breath. I'm struggling for breath, and I'm struggling not to gag on my own little dangly in the back, the the uvula. And I go to the emergency room, and uh, as soon as I tell them what's going on, they actually like take me in front of lots of other people. They fast track me through the whole process and get me into a room and the doctor comes in and he, you know, he's asking me a bunch of questions, asking me if I'm allergic to anything. And I'm like, no, because at this point, as far as I know, there is nothing in the world that I am allergic to. I've never had an allergic reaction to anything up until this point. And uh, so I'm like, no. And they're they're stumped as to what's going on. Uh, and they're they're planning all these tests and blah 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 and finally you know I'm like well wait you know I did I ate some Chinese food tonight and I'm a little sick or whatever and they're like well what did you eat because I, I for some reason like while they were asking me all these questions I failed when, when they asked me if I'd eaten anything weird I told them no because you know what I love oh look we got a black hole here uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys I love shrimp. I love shrimp. I love lobster. I love all kinds of sea crustaceans and whatnot. Uh, and I wait. Okay, no, no, no. I was just making sure I wasn't pointed at the neutron star at this point. Uh, I love shrimp, and I've eaten it all my life. Like uh, when I was a kid, living, growing up down in Texas, my father and I used to go crawfishing all the time. Never thought it was a problem. It turns out that I am severely allergic to shrimp but it's weird like I can eat cooked shrimp no problem if I go to a sushi place and I eat the the shrimp and like a sushi platter now I know necessarily that's not raw at least not the shrimp when you go to a sushi place generally it's prepared in some way but it's not necessarily raw like the the, the fish is so uh, but if I eat the sushi like the shrimp at a sushi place, the the same thing happens, uh, and that kind of I ran in. Oh, hello. Hold on, pause. That is a water world. But we've got this black hole. These might be neutron stars, so I'm going to be checking those out. But anyway, so it turns out that I am severely, severely allergic to shrimp but only in certain conditions like if it's cold I don't think I can eat it like a cocktail shrimp thing I'm deathly afraid of it because I'm not sure how it actually works if I go to like a seafood restaurant and I order like grilled shrimp or fried shrimp or something like that it's absolutely fine I can eat that all day doesn't bother me doesn't you know constrict my throat doesn't close up my throat doesn't make anything swell it's fine but so they had to hit me with an EpiPen, Epi which is the first thing or first time I've ever, ever even done. I didn't even know what an EpiPen was. But they hit me with that and uh, and it instantly helped. Like it instantly, like the swelling started going down. I could breathe. It was great. So I was really bummed out because I thought that I couldn't eat shrimp anymore. But uh, and like they didn't really give me a whole lot of information. They just were like, you know what? You're apparently you're allergic to shrimp. So you should probably stop eating shrimp. And, um, so over the years, I kind of, I didn't necessarily forget about the story because I tell the story a lot because I think it's funny that Harry Potter tried to kill me, but, uh, and I'll get into that in a second because you're probably thinking, how does that have anything to do with it? Uh, I didn't necessarily forget about it. I just, I thought it was gone. I thought it had gone away because I'd eaten like 
grilled shrimp. Oh, excuse me. Whoo, whoo. Grilled shrimp uh, and like baked shrimp and, and fried shrimp or whatever. And everything was fine. So uh, I started going to the sushi place a lot. And, you know, with friends and, and my girlfriend at the time. And uh, a lot of times when I when we were leaving, it would feel like some food is still stuck in my throat. And it would be kind of painful. And, you know, I'd try everything to, like, dislodge it or whatever. But it turns out that, again, my throat was just constricting. And uh, that's when I decided, look, I'm completely done. If the shrimp isn't cooked, I'm not eating it. But anyway... To get back to the actual story, the reason I say that Harry Potter tried to kill me is that if I had not fallen asleep, I would have noticed this sooner and probably gotten help way before it started to, like, scare the shit out of me and think that my life was was actually threatened. So fuck you, Harry Potter. Your, your bullshit almost tried to kill me, and I'm not having it. So, I don't know. Maybe at some point I'll try it again. But, uh, not, not the shrimp, not the shrimp. I know that shrimp is no good for me unless it's cooked, but may maybe at some point I'll try to watch it again. I don't know. People say it's a great series. It bored me to sleep and I don't know why. In any case, um, because <laughs> uh, like I'm, I'm trying to get to this first. Oh, I should probably slow the hell down just in case it is actually a neutron star. I don't want to slam right into it. Um, but I wanted, I wanted to show you guys whether or not this is a new, these are neutron stars or nothing, because it might be a pretty cool system with the the black hole and the two neutron stars, if that's what they are. Let's check the system map again and hope I don't slam into this thing. Come on. All right, so these are unexplored. That's good. All right, we're gonna slow it down a little bit because I know that I, if it is a neutron star, I have to get within five light seconds to scan it. Um, oh, I doubt it is a neutron star. It's probably a T-Tari. I probably could have just looked on the, the map, actually, which I'll do after this is done scanning and see if the other one is. Because uh, now that I've hit it with the advanced discovery scanner, it should show all the main all the stars on the map, or all the star bodies, anyway. But I think this is just a T-Tari. Come on, buddy. Come on, sir. Oh, it's a white dwarf. Okay, that's good to know because somebody did ex uh, like mention something to me. So we've got two white dwarfs, actually. So those, instead of being neutron cells, are actually white dwarfs. We're going to get a little closer to this one because somebody mentioned that white dwarfs actually distort light around them just like black holes and neutron stars do, and I just want to see that. Uh, I don't actually know how close we can get to a white dwarf. Okay, slow down, sir. Oh, yeah, you can see. It kind of has uh, the black hole effect where it... Uh, I'm pointing at the screen, but you can't see it. But in the targeting reticle there, like, the, the, the space is a little brighter. I don't, I don't know if that actually is distorting it or not, or if that's just because the white dwarf itself is bright. So let's get a little bit closer. It does look cool from back here, though. I don't know how close I can get to these things. I don't know. It gives a cool lens flare effect. So maybe that's what they were talking about. In any case, guys, that's uh, what I was saying is because all I'm really doing in this patch, and I've been doing this for hours, I shit you not, all I'm really doing in this patch is going from neutron star to neutron star, or, you know, black hole to black hole, and scanning is as you can see like i'll just choose random ones and they've already been scanned um but it it's too far away so i'm going to pick a different one i like to zoom in here and what you can still see is generally closer oh see there's another black hole let's go hit that one before we get out of here uh, I, this is the first time i've actually seen two black holes next to each other and I've been in this patch for a long time. For a while, I was actually looking around. I would plot a course to the next neutron star, and then before closing the map, look around and see if I could find a black hole and go to that, because those are a little bit more rare than the neutron stars, especially since the neutron stars are around here all over the place. Uh, and I think their monetary value is around the same. I don't exactly remember. I th uh, the, new the black holes might be worth quite a bit more. 
But because they're more rare, I will choose those over the neutron stars as my next jump. Oh, look at it. That looks so cool. I think black holes look awesome. Let's see what else is in this system, though. Oh, hello. You are huge. I'm going to scan the hell out of that. Come on, buddy. There we go. I'm going to scan this star to see what it is. Because it's huge. It might be a carbon star. Yeah, it has to be giant if I can get it from 39,148 light seconds away. And what's cool about jumping around in the system is I'm barely using any fuel. I've only fueled up once the entire time, and that's only because it... Oh, it's a, a red giant. All right. Eh, whatever. Uh, the fuel line down there actually got to the D, and I fueled back up to full, and that's that's it. So making these, like, four- and five light-year jumps really does nothing to the fuel, and it's ridiculous. But uh, once again... You guys can trust that I will continue hitting a lot of these neutron stars in this patch. I mean, the patch is, is ridiculously huge. Right now, I've only got non-sequent stars, um, you know, filtered on the map. So, I mean, this is these are all neutron stars and black holes. It's fucking ridiculous. But uh, what I was doing originally was I would, you know, always orient myself with the core and try to move toward the core while I was doing this, but I realized that it was just taking too long to get the to the next one, <clears throat> and instead I would just pick whatever's closest, like right here. Let's just go to that one. Sure, why not? But anyway, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos of Elite Dangerous or any of the other videos that I've done, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you have anything to say, throw it down in the comments. Remember, I'm Commander Russ's Corpse. Thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Eject. 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 Eject.